Okay, so let's start this thing out. Let's talk about InDesign Demo Basics. So um, we're actually going to start a new document because while well, that was a nice opener, that's not actually where you're gonna start off. So we're just gonna start with a new document and it brings you to a place that looks something like this. So what we're going to do is um, talk about a little bit of basic setup. Now for what we're doing, we're actually going to keep this at about eight and a half by 11 inches. We're going to keep our orientation at portrait. We're going to make sure facing pages is clicked. And this is hugely important for what we're doing right now, because when you're building a magazine or any sort of publication, um, what makes InDesign so special is absolutely that function of being able to see what a page spread looks like. Uh, Illustrator doesn't work the same way. It's individual. Um, artboards, it's it's not the same, and, and InDesign really is incredibly like Illustrator, but it really shines when you're talking about page layouts and, and flow. Um, as far as columns go, we'll talk about columns a little later. We're going to adjust that on the inside, but there is a global command here that you can, you can play with. As far as margins go, I'm going to, I actually tweaked these a little, and I'll talk about how I tweaked them. Originally, um, this margin section looked like this. All of my margins were exactly the same. And this little um, link over here was, was clicked so that if I changed anything, they all responded in turn. I actually am going to unclick that. And I'm going to change just the bottom margin to be about uh, 3 quarters of an inch instead of half an inch. And the reason I'm going to do that is the same reason why um, in framing, um, you might you might have noticed, you might not, but in framing, often with artworks, the bottom side of the frame actually has a little bit more matte on it than the other sides. And the reason for that is, optically, our eyes tend to see um, work that is towards the bottom of a frame or even the bottom of the page, and it feels like it has extra gravity. It feels like it's falling off the bottom of the page. So I like to add a little bit more margin along my bottom of the page to, to lift things up a little bit more and remind me to give a little bit of visual space there to make sure that um, the layouts feel, feel light and airy. So I'm just going to create this at this point, and papa, here we go, we have a document. Now, um, you can see that bottom margin right there is, um, is a little larger. So we have our half inch margins on our sides, our top and our interior. Um, and then we have the three quarters of an inch at the bottom. Now here's the big aspect of what makes InDesign really so valuable. And that is this area right here. Um, and before I dive into this area, I just wanna show, I'm actually looking under essentials and that if you are not looking under that, you can actually go under window, and your workspace and hit essentials or reset essentials if it doesn't look like that and everything should suck into this layout and then we'll make sure that we're, we're all looking at the same spaces and areas. Now, as far as the page layout goes, um, this is our first page in this layout. We will be dealing with this area. We will not be dealing with these master pages up here at all. Um, I can do a second uh, lecture on those. Those are very specific and they're super useful, but Right now, as a basic intro, we're not going to touch up here. All of our page layout or all of our page design will happen down here and on here. And what I mean by down here is this. As soon as you go to this bottom right corner and click Create New Page, you start to see how InDesign is different than Illustrator. What you're seeing here is full page layouts and full page layouts inside of a flow of a document. So this would be the cover. So we're talking about this page right here. That would be the cover. Then you've got your interior, probably table of contents. And then you would actually start in with your actual magazine design layout, the main body content. And you can navigate by either scrolling up and down through this main document, or also here, if you highlight pages, you can see we start to move through. And that blue highlight tells you that's the page you're talking to. <sighs> so um, let's, at this point, that we have a couple pages laid out, and obviously you can add them. You can also take them away or add them back in. The great part about this is you can also grab them and pop them around. Um, so if you have layouts in the magazine, and I did this for a number of clients where the flow of the document wasn't quite working and we wanted to move a few things around, you can grab whole layouts and just totally move them to other parts of your document and, and um, it easily reflows. 
But before we get any deeper, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, so one of those things is saving, and this is quite important. So, so hold on and, and listen, please. Um, if I go to save this, you'll notice that um, I have a demo folder set up for this class. I will call this um, in class. In class demo and I'll come over here to my demo folder and what you should notice is that um, I will save my document in here I already had a test document I saved in here but we'll save this one in a second but I want you to notice that I have an images folder and a copy folder um, and I'm gonna reference those in a minute once we're um, inside the document and it's saved but I just want to show you that inside one folder I have my document and then I have an images folder and a copy folder saved inside and that is incredibly important within InDesign and keeping your files together. Um, more on that in just a second. So I hit save and document saved. Now let's talk design. So just to make sure that we um, know where everything is, I just grabbed my text tool and I'm going to drop in here and say, Cover. And I'm just going to highlight that and I'm going to blow that up to like 120. There we go. All good. So covers hanging out right here. We'll come back and we'll design that a little bit more later. Um, now I'd like to go to my first spread. So I'm going to come down here to um, page number two. Boom, boom. And I'll move it over and center it just a little. Now let's just say um, I have my photography collected already for my magazine and I have my articles already collected and written and, and saved. So now it really comes down to the design aspect. So let's just assume all that's set up. Let's talk about how we actually get those materials into this document. Let's start off first with this guy right here, the rectangular fr frame tool. Now there's two ways you can go about adding images. Both deal with this tool. The first way is you can grab this tool and let's just say um, I'm going to drag a box to be that big. Um, I'm going to want that image to live there and I'll, I'll flow some type below it. Once I've created that box, the way to actually get an image inside is to hit Command D. Now Command D opens up a, um, a finder window. Now this is inside of that folder that we talked about. Um, here's my actual in-class demo file that I just saved, and here are the two cop uh, folders that I had built inside. One is copy, and you can see I have a little Word document. We'll come back to that later. And the second is images. Now inside of here, I did a little collecting, and I went online and just found some, some pretty shots. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about resolution here, because I'd like you to notice a little bit of um, some of the difference in sizing. And some of this you can see just through um, the actual size of it all and down here in dimensions. So if I'm talking about this 3D decoration, this really pretty fireplace, whatnot, I'm talking about my file size um, two different ways. One, it's 276 kilobytes, but it's also a thousand by a thousand, roughly. Other numbers are in there. If I come down to these, um, so if I come down to these Getty images I, I snagged, you're seeing the file size is actually quite smaller. It's about half the kilobyte size, and it's also about half of the actual size. A thousand um, pixels is a really nice benchmark for somewhat high quality imagery. Now, if you were a professional designer at this moment, you would have a professional photographer giving you beautifully large images. If you can take your own images, fantastic, please use them. But the bulk of you will be grabbing images off the internet. Um, I would suggest using Getty, no, actually, scratch that. I would suggest using Google Images and um, using their tool section underneath their images to search for large images. I'll go through that in a moment. But for right now, since we already have this image right here hanging out, I'm going to go for the larger image here, this wonderful 3D design art modern wallpaper. I'm going to be playing with um, probably about a thousand by a thousand image. So let's go open and boom. Now you'll see that image isn't actually the full image. It's only a section of the image. And there's a reason for that. Oh, look, there's a department name. Um, the reason for that is the image is actually much larger than we're dealing with. Um, and if I were to grab my, whoop, I'll get rid of that. There we go. If I was to grab my um, 
arrow, my selection tool, and go to here and click on this center. Now this center dot essentially looks like the old school targeting dot of a camera and they're using that on on purpose. If you look at my overall image you can now see that the blue line here is the image box I drew but this orange line is the actual size of the image and that's really important to know because these little guys over here in the corner the fit content proportionally fit content um, oops, yeah, fit to frame, fit to content. I'm saying these all wrong. Let's try that again. Fit, fill frame proportionally, fit content proportionally. Those are two different things. One does this. You see the little, um, we hit side by side here, and you can see I have a little extra image hanging out on the top. I can also say fit content proportionally, which actually pulls the full image in. And now I've got this issue of like, okay, everything's still in proportion, but instead of having image overlap on top and bottom, now I have no image on right and left. So the difference between those is image is cropped nicely. Um, image is full, but has these weird spaces on the side. And then there's these other ones, which are also super useful. So I could say fill content to frame. I could say fit frame to content, so that's different. So this will suck, um, or it will fit the image to the frame size. This will actually fit the frame to the content. So if I wanted this, if I'm like, oh, actually I like that, maybe I'll, I'll fit frame to content, boop, all of a sudden it all gets sucked together. I can now grab this and put it over here, and then maybe I'd fill type next to it. Great. I'm not actually digging that. I'm going to go back the other way. I'm going to hit Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Um, and I have this big blue box here. I've got this image overstretched or, or, or cropped down, let's put it that way, um, over here. Now, if we get in here, you can actually start to see, if I do stuff like this, and I zoom in just a little, you can see that this blue line still is here. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, on this um, image frame but it's a huge part of design inside InDesign and if you get your head wrapped around it it makes a world of sense it makes life much easier but you can see that if I'm in here I'm moving my image around this frame if instead I was to grab this blue line and do this it would it would crop the image so we've got two boxes here we have your actual image and then we have the actual image box and it's like an automatic cropping so I hope that all made sense um, I'm going to go through that whole process again just one more time. Um, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to grab my rectangle frame tool. I'm going to draw a big box. Oop, that's a little better. I'm going to hit Command D. I'm going to grab that very same image. I'm going to say open, and there it is. Now, if we go back over to the right here with everything selected, I can say fill frame proportionally. Poop. And there we have it. So if we want to see what the actual image looks like, I can click inside right here. And you can see that the image is actually taller than my box. Um, so I have a little overlap up top, a little overlap down below. I'm actually, because of the way this is structured, I'm going to actually um, move that up a little. And you see if I go too far, oh, I've gone too far. I have a little white spot there at the bottom. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to pull it back down. Boop. Um, now, I hope that helps you understand the difference between a actual image box and the image that holds it. If I want to actually... Uh, trim the image itself. I can grab the blue outer line and trim that in if I wanted to. I don't, I wanna leave it just like that. Yay, there we go. So I'm gonna start that out as my opening image. And what I might also do is add a little type on top of it. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm just going to draw a type box over here. And inside of that, I'm going to write, what should we write? We should write nice. There we go. And I'm gonna say select all. Or which would be Command A. I'm going to come over to my font and I'm going to choose something, um, something a little larger. So let's go up to like 72. Nice. There we go. Now, 
um, with this. I'm going to throw this back on here. Eh, it's all right. I actually think I want it to be white. So I'm going to come over here to my um, type color tool. And inside here, I'm going to click paper. Now, paper is white. That That is essentially in design speak for white. Paper is essentially um, white because in, in printing, professional printers have white ink, but in most cases, the white you would use would be the paper that you're actually printing on. So that's why they list it as paper. So I'm just gonna say paper, um, come back in, looks nice. I'm actually gonna even come back in here and I'm gonna spread it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go over to this and adjust its, um, its tracking. I'm gonna kick it out by probably about 100. There we go. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna just say nice and input that, something like that. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna tighten this up a little, just put that there. Fantastic, I've got that. Now, what happens if I want to add in the rest of the body copy? Like I have a whole article that comes after this. Well, let's start to do that. For that, I'm going to um, draw a text box. I'll just put it down here, something like that. Um, and then I'm going to use my finder to come back to this. Yeah. So if let's just make this a little cleaner, I'll go inside there. This is that, um, that demo folder I made. And again, here's my, this was my original test file made it before you guys were here. Um, and this is the in-class demo. You just saw me save. Here's this image folder that has all my images. And then there's my copy folder. And for that, it's a great place to keep the copy where you want it to be and make sure you have everything you need. Now, I'm not going to add in this part. Um, this part is just the title. I'll actually deal with that in a second. Instead, I'm going to add in all of this copy. And you're going to see me just go through the whole piece and grab all of it. Now, um, I'm just going to hit copy. And then I'm going to come back to my actual InDesign document. I'm going to go inside my text box. And I'm going to hit Command-V, which is paste. Now. Let's do that one more time, but I want you to look at the box and I want you to notice right here. Do we see this red box that pops up here? If I undo that, it's not there. My type box is just blue. As soon as I paste in, you'll see that all of my type is in there, but there was way more type and now all of a sudden I have this little red box. What that red box is, is a link. Now, if I grab my type over this way, and I'm actually gonna hide my, um, my pages for a second. You'll see that all of that type is actually still in here. And what this red box in the corner means is I have more type that I can't show. This lets you actually link other type boxes together. So let me just show what that means. I'm gonna shrink this type box back up. I'm gonna put it back over here. Um, I'm gonna shrink it up just a little bit more. There we go. Now this type box, I'm gonna make sure I have my selection tool and I'm gonna click on it and you'll get that. And what that means is I'd like to make a secondary text box that's linked to the first one. And if I draw a secondary text box, all of the type from here runs over there. Oh, I've got more, let's do that again. Click it again. And I'll draw a second box. Ooh, boom. Oh man, I've got more. Perfect. Let's take this one over to the next page. Scroll up here and boom. Wow, I actually have quite a bit of an article here. Let's just keep going and ah, we finally ran out. There we go. So now you can see the amazing aspects of InDesign. We've got an opening page. We've got a couple columns of type that we can start to mess with. And then down here, we just keep going through the flow of the document. This is what makes InDesign so unbelievable for, um, for publication design. So right now we, we've introduced a, an image. We've started to deal with type. I'm going to jump onto one more aspect, which is um, columns and gutters. Uh, I cannot stress how important grid systems are within design. And um, I hope to point it out in that um, other lecture uh, that I'll be uploading also, the one that deals with pentagram and we talk about magazine design inside that. Um, but I will talk about columns inside here for a very specific reason. 
So right now I've laid these things out and they look pretty good. I'm, I'm not, I'm not hating it. It's, it's actually pretty nice. I'm not too, it's not too shabby. Um, but it's a little wonky. Like there's some weird spacing going on here. These two aren't the same size. This is kind of hovering. Eh, it's okay. Let's start knocking this thing out. Um, first off, my image, I'm not loving the fact that it's not full bleed. So I'm going to actually take this image box and I'm actually going to extend it out. So you can see here, um, I'm essentially giving it about a quarter of an inch um, on every side that goes beyond the edge. And that is a standard marker for um, for bleeds. Now, if we were printing this, that would be where um, the bleed would go full edge and you have that extra bit. So when it, it cuts on the actual printing, um, you don't get any weird white lines. So um, it's a industry standard, quarter of an inch is about the basic um, some other companies have some different ideas as to um, how to cut those. Um, always talk with whoever's printing your piece to figure it out. But like I said, I extended my my blue line, which is the actual box, uh, my image box. And now I'm going to go back over to my friends over here in the corner and actually fit proportionally. So I'm going to say fill frame proportionally. There we go. And I have a beautiful, good bleed going on two sides. That's nice. I'm going to come back down here and pull up my pages again. So you can see I'm talking to this spread right here. I'm actually gonna specifically talk to that spread, just the left-hand side spread. And I'm gonna go over to layout and I'm gonna talk about margins and columns. Now for this, we've already set up our margins and I could tweak it now if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm fine with the way it's look, looking. I really wanna talk about the columns though. So you can start to see, as soon as I start to pop these up, so one column, it's just the full page. But once I hit two, oh, I get this nice little um, grid system here. Uh, I don't like that gutter. The gutter's a little thin. I'm going to pop that up to a quarter of an inch. I really like a quarter of an inch gutter. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to play with this a little and the fact that I actually want three columns. And the reason I want three columns on this page, and you can see I'm talking to this page, so this is affecting this page, um, I'm going to set this up so that my type actually does a two thirds um, placement here. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm just going to show that. So that's how that's going to look. Now, if I go over to the second page, which let's look at this guy, um, I kind of want, I don't know if I like the two. Maybe I do like the two. Let's go with two. So I'm going to select that page. I'll go back up to layout. I'll go under margins and columns. And for this one, I'll say two columns, and this one I'll knock up again to quarter of an inch and say okay. And now I've got this set up. So I can grab my type box that I was working with and slide it over that way, nice. And then I can grab this other type box and slide it over this way. And there we go, look at that. I've got two super nice um, page layouts. Now, if we look at this, and I'm gonna just pop this out a little, um, it looks okay, but how would I go about seeing it a little better? Well, right over here, this guy right here, this is going to be your friend. This is your view. So if I hold and click, click and hold, you get these different views. So I'm looking in normal. That's where we design. If I hit preview, it takes away all of the guides, and you start to see it in a little bit of a, a cleaner light. Now, I can look at this and say, all right, this is nice. But this line up here is horrible. So I'm actually going to take this box and I'm going to click it up just a little bit. And you'll see how everything rocks a little. Boop, boop. All right, I like that actually. There we go. Um, now I've got this running down over here. I've got a little bit of an extra space in here. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm actually going to just add a return in there. Um, that way these line up lovely. And oh, look at that, we all run through. Not too shabby, but I'm actually missing something here. I feel like I feel like I need another image over here, right? Because this is a lot of type. So I've got this going on, but eh. Um, so I'm going to pull this out just a little so you can see how this works. I'm going to grab my, my selection tool, and I'm going to pull this down. So I'm pulling down the top of this. Now you're going to watch. See how I'm pulling this box down? Watch the type on the next page. Not the one to the left, the one to the left and down. Boop. So all of that type that got squished popped out over here. Now I've got all this room up here. Let's go back up here. 
um, and see what we can do. I want to see my guides again, so I'm going to come back over here in the corner and say um, back to normal view. I'm going to grab my image box again. I'm going to draw a nice image here. Um, and then I'm going to hit Command D. And Command D, InDesign remembers where my images are. I've already used this image. So instead, I'm going to go for one of these smaller ones. And yeah, I'll go for that one right there. This one's smaller. It's not big enough to be a full page. Um, as you can see, it's only 500 pixels wide. So this would be something that I could do this with. Now this, um, it popped in. You can see it, it didn't pop in huge. It, it's, it's quite small. But let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to come over back here to my friends and hit fill frame proportionally. That's not too shabby. Um, but if we look at this, look at how pixelated that is. And if we slide over this way, you can see uh, this one's a little, but it's not nearly that bad. So this image over here, like I said, I grabbed from uh, Google Image Search, and I used the tools. And I'll show you this before this is over. I'll, I used the tools on Google Image Search, image search to look for large um, photographs. And this gave me something about 1,000 plus pixels in size. Now this, on the other hand, I just did a image search and grabbed some cool images, but they were lower res. They're about 500 pixels wide. And you can start to see the difference. Now, what you're also seeing here talks about this aspect of InDesign. This is where we saved our document. And the reason I have all these images saved here is because InDesign does something very special. When you import a photograph, it takes a low res version of it and puts it in your document, but holds on to this other image. And it does that to make sure that when you're building a 14, 15, 100 page document, however big it is, if all of those images were at full resolution, scrolling the page inside InDesign would take all of your memory. It would take every ounce of power your Mac had to actually just scroll. So it would be incredibly slow. So instead, InDesign holds on to just low res versions as you're designing, and then it gives you the opportunity of actually showing them higher res inside the document, and then when it actually is all done, all designed, and you decide to export it, it sits here and goes, okay, we're exporting it. I'm gonna go back to the original high res image suck that in at this very last moment and print that out. So it's very important to have this kind of file structure because you don't want to lose these images. If you lose these images, you'll never have that high res pull at the very end of it that'll make your document look so much better. Instead, you'll have a low res version, which will look essentially like this. Now, if you're inside of InDesign and you want it to look a little nicer, there are ways to force InDesign to show it a little nicer. It will have a little bit of a lag on your machine. Like if you don't have a super robust machine, you'll design slower if it's at higher res. It'll design faster if it's at a normal res. So if we look under displayed performance, right now my document's a typical display. Um, if I throw it over to high quality display, did we all see that? This suddenly got much sharper over here on the chair. Suddenly she's looking pretty decent. Um, and if I go back again under view and go back to, there we go, display performance, go back to typical, you see it goes back. So I'll be able to design much faster, move things around with a nice refresh. Um, we probably won't see much of a difference because I only have two images in this document, but um, it will chug a little slower. Uh, the bigger the document gets and the more you're using a high res um, view on this. So I'm going to go back. Actually, I'll keep it at high res for right now. It's, it's only got two images, so we're all good. Now, as far as this goes, um, if we pull back out as far as a full page view, we have a good set of type work going over here. That's not too shabby. We've got some more rows going on over here. Not bad. I'm not loving this bottom row over here. I'm going to tighten that up just a little. I don't like those two lines hanging out there. I'm actually going to pull this up just a little. There we go. Um, I've got a nice little image here. And then if we move down to this, we now have this bigger jump of, of type. I don't love that bigger jump of type. I would probably, um, what would I do with that? 
I would probably do this. I would come back in here. I'd go back to pages and I'll actually just talk to this one page right here, uh, page number four. I'll go back under layout. I'll go back under margins and columns. And this time I'm going to go crazy. I'm just going to go up to like an eight grid column. Actually, let's go back down to six. Now, just because grids are there doesn't mean you have to use them. Um, there's a great book out there called Making and Breaking the Grid, and it really talks about just giving yourself structure and then figuring out where you want these things to, to live. And for this, I'm going to break this up in this way. I'm going to pull this in like that. And then over here, I'm going to come over and draw another box. Did you see that? I used a little red box on the corner. Um, to make it a, a uh, another connected text box. I'm going to pull this one up to something like maybe that. Is that cool? Well, that's cool. So I'll pull this one down and maybe do that with it. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, how much is left over? Let's see. If I pull this up, do I have a lot? Oh, I do have a lot. Let's pull this back up. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, let's do a full and see what that does. Yeah, that's a little too much. I'm going to pull this up to the bottom. That way I know exactly what I'm dealing with. And then I'm going to just pull this one down to the bottom here. There we go. Oop, I'm off. See, this is where the grids come in. There we go. So now I get to do this. I'm going to come over and um, I'm going to show you a different way to actually um, um, add in images. So I'll do it both ways, but I'll, I'll show you the first way. This is the way we've been doing where we choose our image box. Um, and then we come over here and we go, woo, snap. Um, and I've got my image box. I hit Command D. And now let's choose another image. I'm going to go for it, not that one. Already used that one. Ooh, let's use this one. Open. In there, I'm going to actually say fill frame proportionally. That looks nice there. Let's, this, I want to throw an image over here. Um, and for that, I'm going to um, do this in a different way. Okay, so let's talk about that second way in which we can add in images. Now, the way we just did is we add in this um, rectangular frame tool, and then we import it by saying Command D. Instead of that, you can actually just stay within your selection tool. And all you have to do is say Command D. Now, we're not in the image tool or in the rectangular frame tool. We're just in our selection tool. Um, and I just hit command D. It takes me to my images. I then find the shot I want. Oh, uh, let's go for that one. And I say open. And now I got this little guy right here. Now what this gives me the opportunity to do is actually use that as a tool to just draw the box and let that image fill. Now I'll do that again, so I'll delete that one. I'll go through that process again with just the selection tool. This is a different way to do images. Um, I can hit Command D and I'll grab that image again. Let's grab that one. Yeah, there we go. And I say open. See, I have a little a preview of it. And if I go in here and I go, woo, snap, there we go. Now I kind of like that, living like that. So I'm gonna actually pull that to the very bottom right about here. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to pull this back down and give myself a little bit more room here. Um, what I want to make very clear to you is at times it's very easy to fill the whole page and just um, cover every corner. Um, and sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's nice. Like maybe if I wanted to, I could actually go to this corner and give a bleed on this. So I just pull this one beyond just a little bit there. I'll pull this one beyond a little bit there. And then I'd hit over here to this and say, um, fill content proportion. What does that look like? Uh, let's try this one. Oh, I like that one way better. There we go. Um, and I have my paragraphs and all this. And then I, I, it's important to think about white space and to leave a little white space. So to get an idea of what this really looks like again, we'll go down to the left-hand corner here. And instead of at normal, I'm going to say preview. And you'll start to see like, oh, look at that. Like there's that bleed, but it cuts it off at the edge of the page. This goes to the very center spine. We have a nice little layout here. I've got this type ending up over here and I've got this lovely moment. Now I could have left a little room for some captions here. I would like you to source your images. So if the images aren't yours, you should say where they're from. 
um, to be absolutely sure. I don't want to see any of this. No watermarks in your images. Um, but Okay, so let's catch up. Um, small little thing happened on my laptop, and now we're back. So we lost a little bit, but let me catch you up. Um, let me just show you what happened down here. What I did is I created a pull quote, which means I just um, grabbed a little bit of type from inside, and I believe, yeah, right over here. Um, each of your layouts is going to need a pull quote, um, and um, you just take a section of type, which essentially I grabbed this, something like that. Um, pull quotes are essentially supposed to be that that great quote from the article, like if someone says something outrageous or the, the main point of it, you're supposed to highlight it. So something like that I pulled in over here. And I'd love it to be a little closer to where um, where the actual quote is said, so it seems connected. But for right now, it's living over here. And I just made a secondary text box. Um, now you see the text box. I use this type tool. Just made a text box, pasted it in, made it a little larger. I also changed its color a little. So if you go over here towards the color um, selector over here, you can see I gave it about a 77% gray um, or 77% black, which is a gray. So it was it was just a nice way to sort of make it less harsh. Um, you can see if it was at 100%, it's a little overpowering pops. Um, it's the thing you see most. And actually, I want that back to something that I see, but it's not the the main thrust of the page. And dropping that color back just softens it rather nicely. Um, I pulled out this little bottom bit here. Um, the last thing I want to show you is this right here. Um, as far as credit goes, I had said that um, I want you to, to credit um, your photograph. So if you choose an image from somewhere, um, I'd love for you to just give a little type box at the bottom and let me know where it is. If it's not yours, um, please credit it so you're giving people their due. Um, I do want to go through one quick blurb about where to get the images. Um, now, the image I just showed you, I grabbed from here, and you can see um, I just hit download comp. I would not suggest at all getting images from Getty Images. Um, you can see what it costs to actually buy it. You're not about to buy it. Um, and when you download the image, you get a very low res um, image. And you can see that again if we come in here um, and I turn off um, the display performance, turn back. You can see right there it just falls apart. And that's rather small. This is still holding up pretty nicely, but. Um, when it would print, it would print in this way because it would go back to the original files and pull through all the data. You can see that sharpens up a little. That sharpens up a bunch, but it's still, you can start to see it's a little low res. Um, so instead, I'd like to go and talk about other image sites that you can grab. Um, now for this, I would suggest hugely go to Google um, and um, just do a basic search. And instead of looking at all, um, just look under images and you'll start to get the breakdown. But then there's this great thing called tools. And in there, you can go under size and say, instead of any search, go for large. And all of a sudden, um, you'll start to see much larger images to play with. So this is like a thousand by a thousand, which is nice. This one is, what is this? A thousand again. And let's try this one, a um, thousand. So these are all much larger. Eh, that's a little on the smaller side. Um, how about this one, thousand by thousand? So you can start to see, you definitely get a different crop of image sizes. And this one, we're talking 1100 already um, as far as size. And you can see in the document I played around with how that image resolution helps. Another great way to do um, this is Flickr. Now Flickr, you go there, you search for it. I searched for a person, this lovely dude popped up. Um, if you want it, you come over here to the download section. And when you hit download, you can actually start to see the sizes. And now we're talking, look at that, 4,000, um, 2,000. Those are great. 800, eh. If you're doing a smaller one, maybe a one or two column, great, but not a, not a full page width. And then these are far too small. So you can choose what you download. Um, you can see right here that all rights are reserved. So uh, Flickr does manage their images um, and lets you know how much right you have to use it. Because you're students, you can use these. Um, it doesn't matter um, as far as that goes. If you were selling this work, you'd have to get permission from this artist. But you are not selling this work. It is just for class, so you're all set. Um, 
last thing I want to say about this is, um, is that everything? I think it might be. So we have our cover. We talked about importing images, which was using this guy right here. Um, we talked, oh, oh, oh. Um, remember it used to say nice here? It used to say nice right there. Um, so let's talk about the title, because the, the layout's pretty good. The type's running through rather nicely, all like that. Um, but the title, it used to be nice. I actually, during the, <laughs> during the, um, the issue, um, I ended up grabbing the actual title of this piece, a Berlin apartment with breeze easier. And I just made a little text box. What I also did is I used this right here to actually just draw a box uh, and fill it with a color. And that is what you see um, right here. It's just a simple box and I filled it with a color. And I'm actually gonna toss that in there. And if you look right there, if I'm holding it, you can see up here in the transparency, I give it a little bit of a transparency. I dropped it down to about 94. So you can start to see just a little bit of that, um, that structure behind it. Now I'm gonna work with that and I'm gonna pull it down just a little. And then I'm gonna bring this type and I'm gonna pull it back in up to something like that. And I'm gonna open up that type box because I think I wanna play with this a little. Um, I'm going to grab all that by hitting Command A, and then I'm just going to, let's see, what does it start to look like with a bit? Yeah, nope, 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 that's too far. And then let's push up the, the space between, which is the letting. Let's open that up a little. Ooh, that's not bad. All right, I'm liking that. Let's pull that back in, and let's pull it down a little. Actually, I want to do something like that and maybe pull this down uh, just a touch too and this up just a touch. How's that looking? Eh, it's okay. I don't love it, but for a demo, it at least um, gives us a little type play. Um, we have a nice opening um, paragraph. It leads into our, our larger flow of type. We have a two column layout here. Um, we have another two column layout here. Now these could have easily been um, a three column layout if we wanted to. Um, this is the kind of stuff where you can start to play with um, how you allocate the space between type and imagery and all like that. Um, I hope this was a solid run through of InDesign. I know there was a little glitch in the middle of it, but I think hopefully we recovered at the very end. Um, I suggest um, Please, if you have any questions about any aspect of InDesign that I haven't covered, definitely search um, through the tutorials that are offered. Remember, under EC Learn, um, there is Who Knew It, and you can search under InDesign and, and find how to use certain tools and whatnot. Um, again, I hope this was a good walkthrough, and I'll have more tutorials coming your way shortly. Um, till then, have a good one.